Dealing with my pesky neighbors, taking out giant barbarians, and building up my very own medieval castle? Sounds like fun. Today I played 100 years of the most relaxed, low poly medieval castle building simulation game out there, Kingdoms and Castles. The Kingdom of Vortia was established. Its banner consisted of the Vortide Crest along with two stripes to signify the 2000 plus loyal supporters of the king. That's you guys. The main island where the kingdom was going to reside had plentiful trees, a decent amount of stones, and very little iron. I chose a little clearing in between a bunch of trees to put down the foundations of the keep. The five builders that pledged their lives to the kingdom started construction. Their hard work had paid off. Within the first year of settlement, the keep was constructed. There was even an archer tower at the top of the keep that provided a small range of protection. If any enemies were to come in this range, the archers would take care of them. Even though the trees provided good cover to conceal any buildings, they weren't ideal for building a city on top of. So I gracefully ordered all of the trees in the proximity of the keep to be cut down. As the trees were being converted into useful wood, I tried to look at all the different buildings and items that I could construct for my city. Owning a new kingdom does take some getting used to after all. Luckily, I didn't have to do everything alone. There were three different advisors that could advise me on what I needed to do. The first one talked about agriculture, the second one talked about city planning, and the third one talked about military strategies. The tree clearing was taking a long time. I ordered my builders not to cut down as many, just so I could actually start building homes for them as it seemed like they were getting a little bit unhappy. The second I saw some trees clear up, I started construction on roads so that way I could map out where the houses and farms would be at. I built the first three farms of the kingdom and then the first three houses of the kingdom. Well, that made a lot of people happy. I wanted to finish cutting down the trees, but I also needed to start working on my city a bit more. So I made woodcutting the long term goal, and any city construction was to be done right away. I needed more farms as the population of Vortia grew to 10 citizens. It was truly becoming an attractive place to live. I laid out where the iron mines and stone quarries were going to be, and then I built actual roads to those locations. Right when things seemed like they were going perfect, a fire broke out in one of my wheat fields. It then spread to the other five fields, catching them all on fire. Unfortunately, I didn't have a well constructed because I didn't have stone. I had no idea where my citizens were going to go and get water to put out this fire. One of my citizens even ran all the way to the ocean to grab water. Unfortunately, he didn't make it back in time to put out the fires and they burned out by themselves, destroying all six of my wheat fields. Thankfully enough, they only costed a little bit of wood to repair, and I had an abundance of wood so this wasn't bad. I placed down a stone quarry so I could finally build a well, and then I told my citizens to prioritize quarrying stone over timber work. I then plopped down a few houses and built my very first apple tree farm. I wanted to make sure that I kept my citizens happiness up high. That's why I built an apple farm and wheat farms. I finally had enough stone to create a well. This time if anything caught on fire, my citizens would be prepared to put it out. After placing down another apple farm, I admired the beauty of my little hamlet. It was no longer just a keep. It was a collection of roads, houses, farms, a well, and a stone quarry. The plan wasn't to stop there. I ordered the clearing of some trees, and then built a wheat granary and a town square. While all the construction was going on, I heard a dragon roaring off into the distance. It happened to be flying over the island that we decided to build our kingdom on. Thankfully enough, they didn't hear all the noise and commotion that we were making. That alone could have been the end of Vortia. Right when the town square was built, my citizens started to celebrate the transition of our kingdom from a little hamlet into a small village. After the celebration, I constructed a road to where the iron mine was going to be. I also stumbled across the power of being able to rename any single building. 
Sure enough, I renamed the keep to something a little bit more fitting. I didn't like how the town square was facing the keep, so I demolished it. I wanted the keep to be facing outward towards the city so that everybody can enjoy it. It wasn't meant for only me. I also had the idea to have the town square surrounded with roads. This way it looked a lot more spacious and there weren't just a bunch of buildings crowding it. I created a little road that headed away from the town hall and put a cottage down on this road. I knew that this was going to be the new housing area from now on. I wanted to make sure that my citizens were living comfortably and cottages looked like they were the perfect way to do that. I then placed down a tavern to keep up citizen happiness and I also finished off the town square with roads. Now that looks clean. I thought it would be a good idea to place down a stockpile right next to the stone quarry. This way my workers wouldn't have to travel all the way to my keep to drop off the stone. I also put down another stone quarry as this seemed like it was one of the most valuable resources. I constructed almost all of the buildings that I could that didn't require a currency. So I decided that I needed to build a tax collector and start taking some taxes so that way I'd be able to afford new buildings that were better and be able to employ specialist workers. I then built another apple orchard, a produce storage, another cottage in the new neighborhood, and I also built a long road to the ocean. I realized that I didn't have any military defenses inside of my village, so I started working on a stone gate and some stone walls. I didn't have enough stone to surround my whole village, so I just started working on what I could. There were also these little rocks that got in the way, and I wasn't able to build on those tiles. Randomly enough, another fire broke out in my city. It was at one of the cottages. Thankfully, I had a well, so my citizens were able to get a bunch of water and put out the fire in no time. I connected two roads in my kingdom to make an alternate path that could be faster depending on where you were heading in it. I then also threw down a stockpile and an iron mine, my very first iron mine. After placing a few more walls, I decided to consult my advisors to see what they recommend for the kingdom. The agriculture advisor said that I should build more roads to the granaries, the city advisor told me that I should build more stockpiles, and the military advisor told me I should build more defenses. Who would have thought? I continued to make small improvements to my village in hopes that they would add up to become something great. I then ordered the construction of the Chamber of War. This building was used to research upgrades for my troops and it also allows me to build the barracks, siege workshop, and archer hut. It seemed like the materials in my village were not getting dispersed evenly. I noticed that one stockpile there was an excess amount of stone, at another there was iron, and at the main stockpile it was everything else. So I ordered a cart to go around and deliver different amounts of each material to each stockpile. I wanted to make things more efficient, so I destroyed the smaller tavern and built a bigger one. This way, it was able to support the whole kingdom rather than just a small area. While I was distracted by the construction, a diplomat snuck up to my keep. I talked to him and found out that he was a diplomat for King Banta. They just wanted to come and talk to us and say hi as they were a neighboring kingdom. I was very polite to him as I didn't know what power he held, so we just had a regular conversation and things went pretty smooth. Soon after, another diplomat arrived at my keep. I found out that they were sent by Queen Mazenberger, a ruler from another neighboring kingdom. She was very aggressive, but I remained polite, and she seemed to like that. I didn't want to start any fights yet, as I didn't have any defenses set up, and I didn't have any troops at all to fight a war. After dealing with all that diplomacy, I plopped down a market and started construction on it. I also started construction on a manor, which is basically a large house that could fit a lot of citizens, and it keeps them comfortable by burning coal. More progress was made on the walls, and King Banta sent another diplomat. This time, he asked if I would be able to help him clear a wolf den with some of my troops. I unfortunately didn't have any troops, and the wolf den happened to be on his island, so I wasn't able to sail over there as I had no boats. Out of nowhere, a barbarian invasion began. It looked like there was only one boat heading towards my island, but I really didn't have any defenses, so I tried setting up an archer tower but it looked like a lot of the enemies were already getting close to my settlement. My only hope was my keep, which had some decent range and a decent amount of archers on it. There were three archer towers attached to it after all. 
The barbarians immediately started pillaging two of my cottages and made a run for my treasure room. They were able to steal up to 100 gold coins, but my archers took all of them out and we got all of that gold back. After dealing with the barbarians on my island, I built a dock so that way I could have mercenary ships go to the neighboring kingdoms. There were still a few barbarians roaming around, but thankfully they didn't bother me. Apparently, in Queen Mazenberger's kingdom, there was a plague going on, so she reached out to me and asked for advice, which she was very grateful I gave. After dealing with all the diplomacy, I ended up building an archery range. This allowed me to train archers, obviously. I then had a blacksmith constructed, which made tools and armaments, and then a random merchant boat showed up at my docks, which I didn't really trade with them. I constructed some more wells to make sure that the city was safe from any fires. Right when I thought I was getting a break from all this diplomacy stuff, King Banta sent another diplomat. This time he told me that his kingdom was experiencing a plague and he needed advice. This must have been the same plague that I heard about from earlier. So I gave him some advice and our relationship increased. The orders to construct a merchant ship were given. And of course, while I was distracted dealing with that, a dragon decided to sneak up on my kingdom. It looked like they were coming in hot and I didn't know what their intention was. Right when they were right above my kingdom, we started pelting it with arrows, and it started shooting fire at some of my buildings. Fortunately for me, they just started to fly off once they started getting pelt with arrows, and the fire was put out pretty quickly. The kingdom of Vortia had survived its first dragon encounter. It seemed like times were changing and things were getting a lot more dangerous. I decided that I needed to focus even more on defenses and put up some more walls and an archer tower. I then assigned my merchant ship to go and trade with King Banta's kingdom. Right when the merchant ship arrived, he had sent a diplomat to come talk to me. He told me that they had fought off a bunch of barbarians and having a whole bunch of archer towers was super helpful. He recommended that I do the same. I did plan on building more archer towers, but I had to get the walls done first, and I needed to build a forester and a charcoal maker, which was more important at the time. I really focused on my gates and walls, and I even tried building some moats to see what would happen. I didn't know if these would be a good defense, but I wanted to test them out. Queen Mazenberger sent another diplomat. This time she said that I needed to build more archer towers because she had just fended off a whole bunch of barbarians with them. This was essentially the same thing that King Banta said to me. After all that diplomacy, I placed down a well and a transport ship. I also placed down a medical clinic. If both of the neighboring kingdoms got plagues, then that meant that my city was next, so I had to prepare. Out of nowhere, King Banta decided to gift me some items. I have no idea why, but I might as well take them. Soon after, I bought some tools off of a merchant ship that was at my dock. I needed to use these tools to clear out any rocks that were blocking the way of potential walls. What good is a castle wall if there's holes in it? Things were coming together as my city was almost fully encircled by walls. This was important because if any barbarians or invaders tried to attack, I would now have some protection. Sadly, one of the villagers had died while making coal. I built a graveyard and let his body rest peacefully. This made a lot of the citizens very happy. It had become a reoccurring thing by now, but another dragon had decided to fly over my city. We started pelting it with arrows, and it just flew by. It didn't decide to bother us. Right after that, Queen Mazenberger sent a diplomat. She demanded 40 gold. I wasn't going to pay this to her, so I told her no, and she got very upset with me. I don't know who she thought she was, but I wasn't going to pay her just cuz. The blacksmith made enough tools to remove a rock that was plaguing my kingdom. It was in the middle of my walls and I wasn't able to build there. King Banta's diplomat arrived at my keep and he wanted to discuss trade prices. This made our relationship grow even more. It was pretty clear to me that Queen Mazenberger was going to be my enemy and King Banta was going to be my friend. If I needed to rely on anyone, it would definitely be King Banta. I wanted to fortify my walls, and right when I was doing that, some barbarians decided it was time to invade. Only one group of barbarians made it over to my city, and we quickly took them out with the keep archer towers. 
I then built another manor and started to do some other improvements for the city. Time started to fly by and a lot happened. Queen Mazenberger discussed trade prices with me. I upgraded some houses to a manor, upgraded some walls. The kingdom was finally recognized as a full town, built some apple orchards, and even built a diplomacy hall. Continuous improvements were being made in Fortia all around the clock. It didn't matter the time or day. Some archers were finally built and I was able to take out one of the wolf dens that had been plaguing the construction of my walls for the longest time. The wolves had quite a lot of HP and were taking forever to kill, but my archers finally managed to do it. Right when the deed was done, I removed their den and built two walls where the wolves were guarding. It became that time of the year again when barbarians tried to invade. They only sent one army and they were taken out with ease as usual. Queen Mazenberger then sent a diplomat asking for more tribute. I didn't give any the first time and I sure as heck wasn't going to give any this time. So I told her no and lost even more relationship with her. I built a bigger tax collector, <clears throat> I mean a treasury room, and then King Banta sent a diplomat to come talk to me. He was getting pretty annoying at this point because he would always send a diplomat and basically say nothing. I only put up with it because I needed a decent ally in case Queen Mazenberger declared war on me. It seemed pretty likely that she would because she kept coming by and asking for a tribute which I was never going to pay. Things were going pretty awesome otherwise. I built my own diplomats and sent them to a random neighboring kingdom to see what it was like. I didn't know it yet but I was actually sending them to go see Queen Mazenberger. Well the brave diplomats sailed on the boat to Queen Mazenberger's island, some improvements were made around the castle. It wasn't long until the diplomats arrived where they needed to be. I sent them to go see the keep and this castle was low key looking a little bit better than mine. It was intimidating. I also tried talking to Queen Mazenberger with my diplomats, and she got mad for absolutely no reason. I lost relationship because of this. Strangely enough, when I returned to my island, Queen Mazenberger had sent diplomats to come talk to me. I don't know what she wanted, but it seemed like she was just in the mood to chat. This was strange because she just kicked me off of her island. I didn't understand why she wanted to talk. That sounds like something she would say. What? It was clear to me at this point that Queen Mazenberger must have just not liked me. There's no way that anything she was doing was logical, and there was nothing that I could do to make our relationship better. Out of nowhere, a fire broke out at one of my manors. Thankfully there were wells all over my city, so it really didn't cause an issue. King Banta's diplomat came by once again and we just had a conversation, but it improved our relationship. I was really caught off guard when a barbarian army started to attack my walls. I don't know how I didn't even notice them until they got so close. There was a giant barbarian that was dealing massive damage and they took out two of my manors. This was so annoying because I had just built them not too long ago. My archers must have done a good job because out of nowhere the barbarians decided it was time to retreat. They did their damage and they got out of there. Soon after the barbarians invaded, a dragon started to attack. They caught one of my buildings on fire and we scared them away with a bunch of arrows. It seems like things weren't really going well this year. We noticed another barbarian marching on our castle to the north. This was not going to be a good encounter. What the heck? Why did he run away when I sent my archers over? I'm not complaining. Things started to go south in the kingdom. We lost quite a few citizens from the few events that had just happened, and because of that I had to lower the tax rate as people were getting unhappy. And we all know that no taxes means no money. And no money means no troops or defenses. This was going to be an issue. I had to spend as much time as I could rebuilding the city and returning it to its former glory. If I didn't, then I wouldn't be able to afford troops to defend the castle. I noticed that Queen Mazenberger had sent a diplomat and they were just sitting outside my keep. I didn't want to anger her anymore because I knew if I did, war would start. So I basically ignored her and made sure not to make any contact with the diplomats. To promote growth in my city, 
I bought some items off of the merchant ships. And then King Banta noticed that I was kind of struggling. So he sent a gift, and I honestly was so thankful that he was my ally at this point. I hosted a festival in my town square to make my citizens happy. They really needed it in the middle of all these disasters. The festival paid off. It seemed like the happiness of my citizens was going up significantly. So I played around with the tax mount, and I was able to snag 10% taxes from all of my citizens. It honestly seemed like someone was working against me, because out of nowhere, my diplomat hall got struck by lightning and caught on fire. Luckily it was raining, so the fire was put out immediately, but it was still just a minor inconvenience, and why did that even have to happen? I started to fortify some walls, and thankfully, I did. Within the next year, I noticed that there was a huge amount of barbarians charging my island. Even Queen Mazenberger's island started to get raided by a bunch of barbarians. I was getting a little bit nervous because this seemed like a lot more than what I'd be able to handle. It seemed like some of the barbarians though did stop at King Banta's island instead of just coming straight to mine. Uh oh. Four massive barbarians accompanied by one small party of barbarians started to attack my walls. I was doomed. There was no way that my one unit of archers and my lack of towers was going to take care of all of these barbarians. Unexpectedly enough, Queen Mazenberger's troops came to my aid. She had quite a few tracking down these barbarians, and luckily she did. Otherwise, I would not have survived this at all. Now I at least had a chance to survive. The enemy barbarians were able to destroy quite a few buildings in my kingdom. This was super annoying because I had just recovered from the last barbarian invasion. Things were about to get even more difficult. At least the kingdom was still standing though. I told all of my builders to rebuild as much as they can. Almost everything needed to be repaired or rebuilt to some degree. Jeez, that is a lot of rubble. Queen Mazenberger had her diplomat outside of my keep for quite a while. Unfortunately, when I talked to them, they said it was too late to do anything, and I lost reputation with her. It was clear that I needed more troops after the last barbarian encounter. So, I started training some more archers. Once they finished training, I sent them to clear out a wolf den. That was when King Banta sent another diplomat. It wasn't really anything important, so I went on and tried to upgrade different parts of my city. Some of these upgrades included trying to place a large stone quarry, which I couldn't for some reason figure out, building a new stone gate, and constructing a ballista. The inevitable happened. Queen Mazenberger came back asking for a tribute. I did owe her a little bit because she did help me out against those barbarians, but I didn't feel like paying her and I really didn't have the money to. So I told her never, and she declared war on me. Since I was now at war, I had to get my stone quarry situation figured out ASAP. It was only a matter of time before I saw a whole bunch of troops sailing towards my castle. The siege began. My troops weren't even in position, and the enemies already had started attacking my castle walls. We rained down as many arrows as we possibly could at the enemies, while they started to attack our walls with swords and shot arrows back at my archers. A catapult from their backline started flinging stones at my castle wall. This was not going to be good. A catapult could easily take down my castle walls, and I knew that they wouldn't hold for too long if I didn't do something quick. Luckily enough, another archer unit had finished training. So I had all four of my archers focus in on one single target at a time. They melted the enemies like butter. It wasn't long until I was able to send some archers out to try and take on the catapult. It seemed like we were going to get a little break. My archers were able to take out all of the remaining enemies, and I was now able to build up some defenses as I awaited the arrival of more enemy forces. Once they arrived, one of my castle walls was completely destroyed, and enemies were breaching the wall. They started attacking my barracks and my archer range. But fortunately, they didn't destroy either buildings, and I was able to take out all the enemies who made it inside my castle. While my troops were trying to make some quick repairs, more enemies rushed us. I was getting pretty comfortable with these four archer units as they were doing a really good job. I honestly got a little bit too cocky with them, 
and started sending them outside of the castle walls for the different waves of the enemies. Honestly, this wasn't my smartest idea, but I did just train the swordsmen to be able to block off any enemies who tried to rush them. Well, at least I thought that's how it was going to work. Once my swordsmen engaged with some enemy swordsmen, they ran right past them, and then the enemies were able to take out some of my archers. This was unfortunate because I had a lack of soldiers, and I couldn't really build any as I didn't have any supplies. This could honestly be the end if I don't play my cards right. To spice things up even more, the barbarians started their raids. This could either go really well for me, or really poorly for me. If they attack my island, I definitely won't be able to hold them back. But now if they attack my foe's island, then that could be something pretty good. Luckily enough, only one barbarian unit made it to my island, and they were super weak, so I honestly lucked out. On the other side of my island, however, I saw more enemy troops. It seemed like they were hesitant to either attack me or go after the barbarians. This made things a lot easier because their forces were split up and easier to handle. Sadly, my swordsman's luck had come to an end. He was fighting off some invaders when he was killed. He was the last of that unit. My archers were able to handle the rest of the troops and then I started building a giant tower in the front of my castle. My idea was to sell enough supplies so that way I could build a ballista at the top of the tower and it would be able to take out a lot of enemies a lot more efficiently than my archers were. The ballista took some time to construct and Queen Mazenberger sent a diplomat saying that she would be willing to have peace if I were to pay her. There was no way I was going to pay her a tribute for peace. I was honestly winning the war, so why would I pay her? Right as the ballista was nearing completion, the enemies tried to take a different approach and attack my castle from a different side. This wasn't smart because I mowed down the enemies and then I rebuilt the castle wall even stronger so they couldn't try it again. It looked like Queen Mazenberger had a lack of troops to send over, and my ballista was now fully completed. One of the enemy transport ships that tried to drop off some more troops at my island started to get lit up by my ballista. It honestly did a lot of damage to it, and it could probably take out the full thing if I didn't want it to focus on the archers and take them out right away. An enemy catapult landed on my island, and the ballista took one shot at it, dealing half of its health. Wow, that was overpowered. My archers finished off any remaining enemies, and I realized that it was now time to go on the offensive. 